situational awareness, something you can use every day, uh, you can practice with it. Um, and if you're really skilled with this, you'll really limit the chances of you ever becoming a victim of assault. I'm gonna give you some techniques and um, that you can use on your own when you're going different places to use and show you try to keep it within the bounds so you don't get burned out. Okay, that's very important because it's, it tends to happen a lot. They, people really get really enthused on it, they, they try it, it's too overwhelming, and they just give up. So what is situational awareness? Anyone want to take a guess? So you want to be aware of your surroundings, um, and then you're having a perception about your surroundings, and then um, basically a comprehension of what they mean, and the important part is projecting what might happen in the future. So if I see somebody approaching me in a very aggressive manner, um, I'm trying to think, okay, is he, what does he want? Is he maybe panhandling, asking me for money? Does he have a weapon in his hand? I'm trying to make estimations of what might happen, and then you're, you're coming up with a plan to hopefully mitigate that and get away. And some of the things that we can do to help strengthen uh, our plan and how we react is uh, basically understanding human behavior, which we'll talk about today. Um, and one of the biggest things too is just your senses, okay? You got five senses, right? Uh, even your ears are very important. You know, if you're going to a parking garage late at night, you go off the elevator, uh, before you maybe step out, maybe just hear if you see any footsteps or people talking, or if you're going through a stairwell late at night, do you hear you know, stuff on the stairwell? If you see, hear that, then you may not want to go there at that time. So using your senses are very important. Verbal and nonverbal cues um, are very important. Uh, basically body language, okay? You know, how somebody's talking, uh, but also what they're wearing, you know, the mannerisms, which we'll get into more in detail later, uh, of what to look for that could be concerning behavior. Um, also your uh, threat assessment, which is very important. And what I'm gonna show you the different levels of threat assessment is which we can do to be more hypervigilant and also and more relaxed in other times, okay? Um, I would do this all the time. There's some places I'm, I'm ready to go, I have a plan, I'm, I'm thinking of stuff that can happen if I'm in a dangerous uh, spot or area versus um, driving to work during my shower. You know, I'm just kind of carefree, right? So threat assessment is very, very important and also how you can build intelligence, criminal intelligence about where you live, your neighborhood, uh, different things like that is very important. Also your preparedness and your training, which we're why you're all here today, to work on getting some good skills the more training you have, the better prepared you can be to deal with what might come. Two main principles of uh, situational awareness. Stay alert and trust your gut. Okay. Your subconscious is it's so advanced. It's just amazing that the power our subconscious brings. That I think they say sometimes we only use like 10% of our brain capacity if you count the subconscious and the cognitive together. The reason these gut feelings will be because your subconscious is picking up on environmental stimuli that's concerning. You may not, in your cognitive brain, know why, but it, it's your subconscious gut feeling that something's bad or somebody has ill intent, you need to respond to that, okay? Uh, there's a study that was done by uh, victims of assault. Um, so the overwhelming majority of the people knew they had that gut feeling and they didn't react, okay? There's a story of a lady who was um, walking down a, to make a right turn down the street and there's, a, there's a, like a white work type van and the guys, you know, kind of leaning like this on the side of the street just hanging out there. Uh, she saw the guy, she got a bad feeling, and instead of either walking across the other side of the street and going around, or not even going that way, she goes, walks right by him, and what do you think happened? He grabbed her, threw in her van, and raped her, okay? She had the feeling, but she didn't react, okay? Situation awareness is, as soon as you get that stimuli, you need to trust your gut and go with it. Even if you're wrong, okay? I firstly have dealt with that, have been assaulted, and, and look for these, Things like, yeah, I knew it, I just, I did, but I didn't do it, you know? And it was too late. You, you can't wait till somebody's two feet in front of you and decide if they're good or not, okay? You'll see that sometimes there's a color chart, uh, we'll have uh, levels of threat assessment. Uh, starts with white, which is basically, you're sitting on the, on the couch with your cup of joe, watching, you know, reading a book or something, and you know, there's, there's no immediate threat there, you're relaxed. That, that's the, the lowest level. The yellow level is basically, you're aware of your surroundings, but you're still relaxed. So that's like, that's where I tend to stay in. Like if I'm going for a shower, I'm running the gas station, get a cup of coffee, I'll do a quick scan, look around. I'm still relaxed, you know. Now if I'm going at 10 o'clock at night when I'm driving a road trip and it's a bad area and I was, I was bad and didn't get gas when it was uh, a better time, I will be very hyper vigilant. I'm looking at people 
take a note, what the people are doing, what are the behavior, is anything going on before I even get out of the car and go into the gas station. So your threat level goes up, okay? So, uh, yeah, but generally where we want to stay is a yellow. We're still relaxed, we're not taxing our nervous system at that point, but we're still aware of what's going on, okay? You should be in a very state of readiness, watching out, which is basically the orange state, uh, which is the next one for basically high threat areas. Uh, what do you think are some high threat areas? Dark spots in the parking lot. Just dark areas. Mm -hmm. right? Like at night would be one somewhere. Uh, if it's a remote area. Mm -hmm. um, like gas stations. Uh, any mass transit. You're waiting on the subway or a bus, a bus station. They're very dangerous. A lot of uh, tuna traffickers hang out there. Uh, so you want to know if you have some young teenagers that want to go on a bus trip somewhere. Uh, they just look for, for victim. Parking lots and parking garages would be another one that's very high risk. If it's late at night, um, again, because there's, there's nobody around that might be able to help you, right? So they look for occasions when there's not many people around. A red is basically, you've seen something, somebody's approaching you, you're aware, now your nervous system's getting kicked up, now you're thinking about your plan and what you can do, respond if it does go bad, and black is basically, you're in the middle of getting assaulted and then you need to defend yourself. Again, you never want to be in the red and black all the time, there's no, Need for that, so you want to kind of stay in this uh, yellow awareness. Uh, very important the part is establish a baseline, okay? And we're doing it for behavior and uh, what also like the typical activity for that place. You want to look for what is the baseline of behavior and look for anomalies outside of that, right? So um, if I'm in a big room and there's like a, a reception or something, everybody's having fun and somebody's, you know, I don't know, walking around talking to themselves, just scrolling over to see you guys arguing that that's not a normal behavior for that type of setting, right? So, okay, you're going to key in on that. So, it's very important to get a baseline, right? And that could be even addressed too, like, right? You know, if, if, if you're at church, everybody's dressed nice. I see somebody coming with sweatpants and a, a backpack and a, a baseball cap or a hoodie sweatshirt, that sticks out, right? That's not a normal dress for that like, occasion. So, establishing a baseline is key to get you to see, okay, what is a threat and what's not, okay? Uh, also, body language is an important baseline too. So what, what is a normal uh, body language, right? So now we're going to get into what are some of the unusual emotions that uh, we need to pay attention to.